Hey guys, what's up? Roger here, and welcome to 10 Mile Creations. If you have not subscribed, please do so now. Hit that subscribe button. Only takes a second, and hit that notification bell. That way you'll get notifications when I upload a new video. Now, this channel is dedicated to me sharing the process of creating a 3D print business, but also that goes along with creating your own products. So today, I'm going to be showing you in Fusion 360 how to wrap an SVG all the way around a cylinder so you can create custom embossed or debossed products. All right, let's get to it. So I got on a mission to wrap hearts around a cylinder to create a planter. And as many times as I tried to do that, the only way I could figure out how to do it was using some sheet metal tools. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to step you through how to do this. I pre-prepared an SVG, which is just text that says 10 mile, but you could literally do this with any SVG. We're going to run over to the sheet metal tools. And the first thing we're going to do is create a sketch and we're going to do it on this plane. And then we are going to use the arc tool and the center point point arc is what we're going to use. Uh, we're going to click in the center and then I'm go going to go out about 50% of the size of whatever it is I'm trying to create. In this case, I'm going to go 50 millimeters, um, but literally you can make it any size you want because you can scale it later. Now we're going to click and then we're going to drag around. And instead of making it 360 degrees, we're going to make it 359 degrees and then press enter. All right, that's gonna give us our 359 degree circle. You can see there's just a little bit of a gap there and you'll see why that's important later. So right now we need to extrude this and the way we do that in the sheet metal tools is to flange. So we're gonna click on the line and we're gonna make it 70 millimeters, not 770, woof. 70 millimeters tall. Now, you can't control the width because we are working in the sheet metal tool, so it is uh, going by the sheet metal rules. Whatever millimeter sheet metal is, that's what it's going by. So it's going to determine its own width. And there we go. Now, the tool that we want to use, and I could show it you. I could show you that it won't work. But I'm not going to do that because it just creates such confusion for people. It confuses me when I see people showing me how it doesn't work and then turn around and showing me how it does work. It confuses me. So let's just stick to what's going to work. So what we need to do now is we need to click on this face right here. And we're going to hit E for extrude. And we're going to extrude that about 0.5 millimeters. And we're going to leave that on join and click OK. Now, under the sheet metal tools, now we are going to uh, use a tool called unfold right here. So in unfold, we're going to it wants to choose a stationary object, which is this. And then it wants me to choose a curve or a bend, which is this. And boom. Now, all of a sudden, our cylinder is a straight line. And that's pretty cool. Now. One thing you have to keep track of is which one is the outside and which one is the inside. So what I like to do is go ahead up here to refold faces. And then down here, I can select the outside and then go down in the timeline and back it up before we unfolded it. And then that shows me that this backside is actually the side we need to apply our design to. Let me go ahead and straighten this up. And then we can start the process of putting that SVG on the face. All right, so let's get our SVG on the face. And how we do that is we're going to go into uh, insert and we're going to insert SVG. We're going to retrieve the SVG file from our computer, which mine should be on the desktop and it's called 10 mile and you can see it right there and now I'm going to drag it over onto the face of our folded our unfolded 
cylinder and then I'm just going to drag it out to make it as big as I want it. Now there is going to be a seam and you need to understand that and be aware because if your seamless pattern doesn't have enough of a gap, you want to kind of line it up so your pattern doesn't fall on where the seam would be, if that makes sense. So your pattern will fall so where the um, the seam will run down through your pattern. You won't see it when you print it, but when you're designing, when you um, deboss, it won't deboss across the seam, and it it would create a seam through your pattern. Not a huge deal, but just something to be aware of. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out pretty big, and we'll make it big. So we would typically we probably wouldn't wouldn't make text this big because you wouldn't be able to read it you know, in one shot. You would look at it, but you wouldn't be able to read it. But for our sake, to just show that, yes, you can wrap all the way around the cylinder, that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to go through and wait a minute, let's just hit extrude. And then let's select some faces. And we're going to select all these faces. This one here, this one here, and this one here. And then let's go ahead and extrude that 0.5 of a millimeter. And then we will join it to the other body. And we'll just take a look sideways at it here and make sure. Is it extruding? I believe it is. Click OK. And then there we go. We can see our extruded text. So now we can go back in our timeline where we unwrapped and then rewrapped by the timeline. We can go down to the timeline and drag this back forward and wrap the cylinder again. And then there we go. We have our wrapped cylinder, as you can see, with 10 mile all the way around it. Nice and easy. Now, the last thing we have to do, obviously, is close up that gap. There's a little gap back here, and we need to close that gap up to create a solid so we're just going to go back here again, and I'm just going to do two things. I'm going to click on the face of this one, and then I'm going to hit E for extrude, and then I'm going to hold down shift and rotate around, and then click this face, which will extrude it over, and by default it wants to cut, but we're not going to do that. We're going to choose join, and then let's just make sure that it's fully closed up, and we'll click join. And then there we go. So now there is a seam there you can see, but it doesn't print out. You don't see it when you go to print it. Let me rotate this around. When you go to print it, you don't see that seam. So there you go. There is your cylinder. Now, if you wanted to make this a plant pot or whatever you want to make out of it, you can move forward on the solid sketch surfaces. So if we wanted to make a plant pot out of it, obviously we're going to need to put a base on it. So we'll do a sketch on this face and then we can just drag a circle out to the size of our cylinder and then do an extrude and we can just extrude up where is my uh where's my little arrows what did i do wrong oh there we go so now let's just say we go up two millimeters into the bottom there and we'll click join and we'll click OK. And now we have a nice solid cylinder that says 10 mile with a bottom in it. If we wanted to make a pot, obviously we'd have to bunch, punch a bunch of holes in it. And that's pretty fairly easy to do. Well, let's go through that real quick just so I can show you how to make the draining holes. Uh, we're going to click on this face here. We're just going to draw a, let's say, four millimeter hole hit return and then we're going to zoom in on that hit escape right there hit extrude we'll extrude up through the base to create the hole and now we're going to select this face on the inside and we're going to get a circular pattern tool and uh, we want the object type is faces and the object one is selected, which is that. And then the last thing we need to do is give it an axis. And that's just any axis to follow. 
So we'll use this in the outside circle here. And then you can see it sets that up. Now we need to give it a number of holes. So we'll just increase the number of holes to a count we want. So there's 12, we click OK, and then there you go. Now we have 12 holes in the bottom of our pot. If we wanted to do more holes on the inside, obviously we could, um, I don't know if, can we do multiple directions? Let me see that. Does it, accent, uh, distribution full, yeah. Suppression quantity, no, I don't see that. Okay, so if we wanted to do another set of holes, we'd just have to draw another circle down below and then repeat that process all over again. But there you go. And you can see up in bodies, we have one single body. So all those pieces are one piece. So when you go to print this out, even though you see a line here, it is fully closed and it will not show a line on the print. But if your text was to cross over it, then what would happen, this extrude would not be included in this line. You would see a little bit of line through it. Not a huge deal. You just have to plan for it. But that is one way to wrap an SVG file all the way around a cylinder in Fusion 360. As always, guys, this is the kind of content I love to bring you because not only the business itself, how we sell products, ship products, market products, but also create products. It's a very important aspect. So I hope you learned something from this today. If you have any questions, by all means, hit, hit, hit me up in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And uh, that way you can get notified anytime I pop out a new video related to creating your own 3D print business. All right, guys, later.